Hello, Royal Life. So I am hopping on here in honor of this one's 10th birthday. She's so excited for me to be holding her right now, too, by the way. Um, we're going to talk about essential oils for dogs and cats. So I have a little agenda. Yeah, see how I like strategically moved my camera just now so that you didn't see everything by my sink? That's the goal. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well. Um, during this time of quarantine. Um, if you are here, hop on, let me know how it's going. Um, hopefully I can see your comments. Okay, so what we're going to talk about this evening, real quick, um, oils for dogs and cats. So we're going to talk about why quality matters, oils to use with caution, and oils to avoid, um, some safety tips, how to use them on your pets, dilution ratios, just a quick intro and some ideas and different things that um, you can use the oils um, with your pets. Top oils for dogs and cats. So I originally wanted to hop on here and do it with a PowerPoint, but the internet isn't working as nice as I would like. So um, I am reading, so if you see me glance over, I am reading off of the PowerPoint that Dr. O'Brien and I um, put together for everyone. Okay. So first off, we're gonna talk about quality. So quality is an issue. So the big box store oils, those are not what you wanna be putting on your pets. Those are the oils that you will see that will cause a reaction. So all of those posts that you see on Facebook about essential oils being awful for dogs and cats, most likely wasn't an actual essential oil. Now you can, you know, too much of a good thing can be bad. Perfect, barking on my essential oils and pets video. Harry, can you get me go? <laughs> He's over there. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, there's no regulatory body, so the FDA recognizes essential oils as cosmetics. So that's why anybody can put anything on the front of that bottle. 100% pure, therapeutic grade, um, you name it, okay? Um, I've even seen some fake MSDS sheets, which is pretty interesting. Um, only a chemist can recognize that. I'm, of course, not a chemist, but I have plenty of friends who are. And um, they can recognize those from miles away. So there's a lot of companies that you, even some companies you think do their own testing and it's fake. So you really want quality here, especially when it comes to pets, yourself, your children, all of the above. Um, so let's see, doTERRA, okay. So this is why we use doTERRA essential oils. And like I said, if you're just hopping on here, I am going back and forth between my PowerPoint that Dr. O'Brien and I put together. Um, doTERRA provides third-party testing. This is why I personally choose to use doTERRA essential oils. Okay, I know that I, you know, go around to different places and teach about essential oils, but I came to doTERRA for this reason, okay? Um, they provide third-party testing results. I can't find that with a lot of other companies, and it's per batch. So I can hop on to sourceyou.com, enter the code on this little bottle, and the GCMS report will pop up, along with where this oil came from, along with the farmers, along with the good that doTERRA is doing. Um, also, side note, doTERRA is a debt-free company, so they don't have investors telling them what to do, so they can do a lot of good in the world, and which is especially good for times like this. Okay, so now, let has, we've already talked about quality. Let's talk about oils to view to avoid using topically or internally as of now. So from what we know, so I have done a lot of um, different classes from the animal poison control. I have gone to different vet conferences. Um, I've taught essential oils and pets with a veterinarian, and I'm an animal nurse myself. Um, there are some oils you want to avoid. So wintergreen and birch. Um, being one. Um, one teaspoon, so five mils of pure winter green oil is equivalent to 21.7 tablets of 325 milligram aspirin. So we want to avoid using those two oils on our pets, um, especially just, you know, pure straight on winter green, especially um, internally. We don't even want to take that internally. All right, melaleuca and tea tree. So there's a lot of different ideas when it comes to this. Quality definitely matters when it comes to using um, melaleuca and tea tree on pets. However, there are plenty of other options. So 
if you want to just err on the side of caution, use something like geranium instead. So if you have geranium, I would just use that instead of using um, Melaleuca or tea tree. If there is a blend that you are using for yourself or you, you, you are using Melaleuca on your sinuses, that should be fine. Um, if, if a protocol calls for Melaleuca or tea tree oil on your pet, um, really dilute it out appropriately, you do not want to be dumping a whole bottle of that on your pet. But like I said, if you just want to use something like geranium instead, go for it. That's what I would do um, in this case. So um, it's suspected to be a skin irritant. It does have antiseptic and fungicidal effects. 100% tea tree oil is never recommended for pets. Always, always, always dilute. Um, the products containing low concentrations are usually okay if used appropriately. And these are um, things that I got from the animal poison control seminar that I did. Um, citrus oils. You want to, like used in low concentrations are okay. You see this like contraindicated in cats and like a bunch of different posts. And all of these guidelines are taking into account all essential oils. Okay, so keep that in mind. We do have a veterinary panel with doTERRA and which is phenomenal. So that helps um, to have some expert knowledge on our specific oils. Okay, um, also, side note, wintergreen, birch, melaleuca, citrus oils, diffusing these in low concentration amounts, totally fine. All right, safety tips. Okay, you ready for safety tips for dogs? Never apply oils on or near the eyes. So don't apply oils like around here on your pet. Um, they have a heightened sense of smell near the eyes. Don't apply it near the eyes. If you've ever had peppermint by your eye, you know that that doesn't feel too comfortable. So let's not do that to our pets. Um, so obviously not by the nose, um, not in the ears. Though some people, I have seen people like apply oils like around the ear and that's okay, especially for like some ear issues. And then you don't wanna apply it near the genitals. That won't feel too good either. So know your pet's health status. If your pet has some issues and you're wanting to use essential oils for some of those issues, you do want to talk to a vet that is um, savvy in essential oils. When, from what I've noticed from healthcare professionals, veterinarians, you name it, when they don't know, they say no, okay? Um, which is fine, because I, I mean, you don't want them giving recommendations if they're not comfortable, right? So sometimes we have to do our own research, um, but I do know that Dr. O'Brien, at Capital Line Eye Veterinary Services here in the Springfield area. So she's at the Chatham location. Um, she has done a lot of research. She has educated herself greatly in essential oils. So this is the PowerPoint I'm going off of today. Um, and feel free to ask questions if you're hopping on just now. Um, but obviously know your pet's health status, always get a diagnosis. So we've had people come in that have said, oh my goodness, my dog has an ear infection. Um, you know, we just need ear meds, just need ear meds. And we're like, well, we'll come in, let's take a look. And it turns out, yeah, their dog yelped every time they rubbed the dog's ear or touched it. But in reality, it had to do with the neck. So a couple x-rays showed like a slipped disc. So since our pets can't talk to us, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what is going on. So always get a diagnosis before starting to use essential oils at home, okay, so it's always good to just kind of know exactly what's going on, especially with things like tummy aches in case they have eaten something they shouldn't have in case something is stuck in their intestines. Um, okay, so do not give products that contain xylitol to your pet. This is extremely dangerous, and there are a few products that doTERRA has that do contain xylitol, so just check on the back label. Um, one of them is PBSS Jr., which is the probiotic. So obviously you don't want to give that to your pet. That is very dangerous. Um, just to you know, name one, I believe the toothpaste as well. So don't let your dog get into that toothpaste. Um, sugar-free gum is something that you need to keep in mind as well. So if you carry sugar-free gum, don't let your pup get into that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things in our homes that contain xylitol. So just keep that in mind. The oils, of course, themselves do not. Um, only use oils topically that would be okay for them to ingest. Why? Well, if you put something topically on your dog, um, they're gonna probably lick it off, especially cats. So the best way to get 
um, oils internally to cats is to put it on put it on their fur. So um, for dogs, obviously you're not going to want to put topically wintergreen or birch in an area that they can lick off or itch and lick off. So you're not going to put it on the wrist. Say you're wanting to help with arthritis, pain, or or some sort of muscle soreness, um, and you put it like low. If you put it like say on this area, she could easily lick that and we don't want something like wintergreen going internally to our pets. So you would want to use something else that did not have wintergreen in it. Um, okay, adverse reaction. If you notice your pet seems super sensitive to an oil, so you apply it topically and they're just rubbing, 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 apply some coconut oil. That's gonna help with that. Just like with us, just apply some coconut oil. Don't add water, it does intensify the, the effect. Oil and water don't mix, it's gonna drive it deeper, okay? That's the same thing with humans. Um, most reactions, according to ASPCA poison control or animal poison control, it's actually the pet poison help hotline um they said most resolve within 24 hours and um i haven't personally experienced any reactions we've been using oils in our home for about four years um so we've been doing pretty good skin irritations are the most common discontinue an oil if you sorry i'm going to turn this down um discontinue if you notice any respiratory distress drooling um, squinting, vocalizing, you know, just clearly they don't enjoy whatever's been put on, whatever's in the diffuser. Okay, how do we use these oils in a diffuser? So I have a cute little diffuser here, and this is about a 100 mil diffuser, like this. Um, you're only going to want to use one to three drop, drops in this diffuser for your pets. So, um, I've actually still got some water in here. So I fill it up to this little dot that's going to be 100 mils, and I put only one to three drops in there. I can put in more. I, I have put in more drops because in this area of my house, it is very, very open. So I have done more. Um, and the dogs can go upstairs. They can go, you know, all throughout my house if they don't enjoy the aroma of the specific oil I have in there, or maybe, you know, they don't like it. When my pets love the smell of an oil or are enjoying the benefits of a specific oil, they will sleep or lay down around where that diffuser is going off of. So at the um, animal hospital I work at, um, our cat, our clinic cat, especially loves the minty type oils and he will lay right around where that is. And if you are wearing any sort of minty oil, he is on you, <laughs> like he loves it. Loves it, loves it. Um, always keep the doors open. And here's my big thing about diffusers and people worrying about diffusing around their pets. If you have not been worried, especially with doTERRA oils, okay, keep this in mind, because these are what I know. If you are okay with lighting candles in your house, spraying um, air freshener sprays, running wax warmers, those are going to be, those are going to do more harm for your pet than a diffuser with any type of oil ever can, okay? There are lots and lots and lots of studies in regards to using a lot of synthetic fragrances around our pets and liver and kidney issues, okay? Now, from what I have seen with essential oils, I have seen positive benefits big time positive benefits from using essential oils. So if you want your home to smell nice and you wanna have a positive impact on your pet and yourself, I would choose to get rid of all of that synthetic fragrance in your home and start looking up some really yummy um, essential oil recipes. There are even some, if you have to have that candle, there are even some recipes to make some essential oil candles. That is my recommendation. Did I used to have a plug-in in every room of the house? Yes, I did. <laughs> did I used to have the air freshener sprays? I did it too. But when we know better, we do better. So I am not on here to judge anybody um, at all. And your pet could be just fine. I'm not saying that anyone is doing any harm to their pet right now. I'm just saying if you are more worried about a diffuser than those things, then I, I just am here to reassure you that you don't need to be. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, it would be a good idea to just 
keep an eye on them even when you have those things going. Are they sneezing more? Do they have upper respiratory issues? Do they, you know, what are they doing? Are they itching? Um, things of that nature. And, and of course, you know, different oils are going to affect different people just like pets. So just keep an eye on them, okay? If, if you see the watery eyes, the itchiness, you know, start after you've started the diffuser, just continue that oil, okay? All right, how to to use topically? Dilute, dilute, dilute. That's basically how you use oils topically. Um, you can do it via massage. So what I will do sometimes, so this is adaptive oil. This is their um, calming blend. And Kiara, um, who's 10 today, um, she gets a little anxious. So we will use a calming blend. And how I do it on her, she is an 11 pound dog. I'll put the oil in my hand and I will rub my hands together. So this is like in a pinch, okay? I'll rub my hands together and let it kind of air dry, all right? And then we can put this on her. So this is diluting it. So she's not getting a full drop, right? And we can rub it along her spine. So this is, here's her head. <laughs> along her spine. You can put it um, at the tips of their ears. So not in their ear, but at the tips of their ears. Okay. You can also put it on the paw pads. So where's your paw pads? I know. It's your bedtime, isn't it? Um, or the area of interest. So if she was having hip discomfort, I wouldn't apply the oil like, at her head right you could do the paw pads or like where it you know where the hip discomfort is but for now um, this is just for anxious feelings and she really responds well she does not like thunderstorms she does not like any sort of super loud noises in the house she gets a little nervous she's our nervous Nelly and um, so we like to use calming oil blends on her especially before we leave because she has a little separation anxiety Okay, so let me give you some dilution ratios. Actually, you know what? Unless somebody's on here and wants them right now, I'm gonna just go ahead and post them in the comments or in the title of this video because nobody's gonna really um, remember that right now. So if you want me to go over it right now, I totally can if you're on here right now. Um, but let's just go ahead and skip over that for the sake of saving time. All right, so how to use oils internally. Um, limited to one to two drops at a time. You can mix it with wet food, so that's a good idea. You know, if you, your dog gets canned food, um, or if you water down the dry food, you can mix it with canned food. You can put it in a capsule, so there's veggie capsules um, that you can use, and they're just clear little capsules, and you put a drop in there and um, hide it in like a little pill pocket or a little bit of peanut butter, and down the hatch it goes. You can do it in water, um, one drop per two cups of drinking water, but this is not for cats, so I would not do that for cats. And you might notice some dogs will drink it, some dogs will not. So we were doing, um, sorry, that was a little loud. We were doing lemon water for one of our dogs, and all right, we noticed our other dogs weren't drinking it. So what can you do, okay? Um, so we didn't do it for the other dogs. Cats, it's generally not indicated to use internally, but also keep in mind that they will get a little bit, um, depending on what you put on your skin or on, well, mainly on their skin, so on their fur. Um, you can start a tooth with a toothpick amount of diluted oil mixed with the wet, with the wet food. So you do like a drop per 15 mils in coconut oil, and then you stir that with like a toothpick, and then you put that in the wet food, okay? Um, but like I said, the best way if we need those oils internally um, is to just apply it topically. So I did this with our clinic cat. He had some issues and um, he had eaten something that didn't agree with his belly. He likes to steal our, our food sometimes. And um, he was just drooling. I mean, he was clearly uncomfortable. I did the same thing I just did with Kiara. I put a drop of Digestin, which is our tummy blend rubbed my hands together, rubbed it on his abdomen. 15 minutes later, he is the, he's the same Henri cat he has always been. So um, big time benefits when it came to digestion in that cat. When you are introducing an oil, so we like to do some self-selection. So if there's an option for, for example, the, the calming blend, I'm not going to take this cap off and shove it in my dog's face and you know to see if they like the smell of it. It's too strong. It's too strong for us sometimes. So if you have the cap off 
on some of these oils and you smell it straight up, you're like, oh gosh, so yeah, that's a little much because it's concentrated. So sometimes, even for us, keeping the cap on and smelling an oil is, is going to um, be more true to the aroma in like a diffuser or topically than it would be just smelling it straight from the bottle. Dogs, their sense of smell is so, so, so much stronger. So even with the bottle on, can be a little strong sometimes. So just hold it away, see if they come to it. If they don't, maybe that's not the oil they want. If Maybe it is, we don't know. But if you shove it to their nose and they like back away really fast, that's not their oil, okay? So if you're giving options as far as like anxious relief, um, keep that in mind. There's a lot of oils for those anxious feelings. And I think we're going to cover some of those. Okay, so here we go. Um, oils per condition. Anxiousness, or they're a little stressed out. Diffuse serenity and balance. Apply it to the ear penna um, on dogs or the fur on dogs and cats. Okay, so adaptive is also a good one. Any of those blends. But our favorites for a majority of pets are gonna be serenity and balance. Um, seizing patients, so this is what we've done in hospital. We diffuse, or patients that are prone to seizures. Um, we diffuse copaiba and frankincense. So these are oils that we really like to use, um, that humans like to use as well. Um, but we really like those for our seizing patients. So if we have a seizing patient um, or a patient that is prone to seizures, come in, um, we will obviously do our other things, but we diffuse copaiba and frankincense to help support their body. Respiratory issues, so this is gonna be important, especially this time of year. Diffusing breathe and on guard. I actually had somebody message me the other day with some big concerns regarding this, and the breathe essential oil really, really, really worked well for them. We've also seen this work really well for cats. Um, I've heard of cats just wrapping themselves around the diffuser uh, when it came to respiratory issues. And you can also apply it topically on their chest. I would only do that on dogs though, um, for as of right now, just from what we know, okay? Um, I don't know it ever hurting a cat, but as of right now, I just feel more comfortable telling you dogs only. Ear irritations. Um, frankincense and myrrh around the ear. Diluted oregano is good too. So we've seen diluted oregano do some really cool things. Um, discomfort in general, copaiba and frankincense in a capsule or in like a little peanut butter sandwich or if you want to put it in peanut butter in like an ice cube tray and let it freeze over, you can do that too. Um, the deep blue polyphenol complex. So let me see if I have that in here. Yes, I do. The deep blue polyphenol complex. <laughs> Um, sorry, I didn't have that ready to go for you. This is amazing. It's got turmeric in it. It is awesome. I love using this with the copaiba when I have intense head tension or if I have, um, I've got a kind of a bum knee, so if it's acting up a little bit, I take this. I destroyed my knee in sports. Um, I love that, and, and we're, we love this for our, our pets as well. Um, seasonal issues, so the itchiness that dogs get sometimes. We like trees or lemon, lavender, and peppermint in a veggie cap. So doTERRA has a product called Trees, just like in this form. Um, it's a little gel cap, and we love that. And I actually have that um, over here as well. This is my supplement box, and this is what the trees look like, looks like. And this is what I take as well because I am allergic to cats. So, go me. <laughs> But I'm thankful to be able to use something natural to help support my body because honestly, a lot of the other products weren't working. Um, diffused lemon, lavender, and peppermint is good. I know some people add tea tree oil. If this is over your head, that is totally okay. Um, if you are new here, we have a brand, we have a VIP page. So I totally walk people through all of these things. So if you are hearing some of these things and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I know I have some issues that I need help with, Message me after this is done, okay? Um, skin issues, so really big time skin issues. We like lavender, helichrysum, and frankincense. Um, Correct X is really good for, say, like a suture reaction. 
Um, we like to apply Correct X. I actually applied Correct X on, um, if you know, like those sebaceous cysts when they rupture. I had a dog that had one of those. Correct X, like, it was awesome. It worked so well for that. And it was like a huge gaping hole. It was disgusting. So I loved Correct, Correct X for that. Um, any tummy issues? So we already talked about O'Malley and his stomach issues, eating our food. Um, this, that's the clinic cat if you're just hopping on. Digestin on the abdomen or between the paw pads. So when I mean, don't judge my dog's paws because she needs groomed. But between the little paw pads, like right in there, that's where you want to put the digestin for them. It's okay if that oil, um, if they lick that, it would probably be a little more beneficial that way. Um, and like I said, it's important to consult with a veterinarian as to why your pet is having this issue in the first place. So always, always, always get a diagnosis first. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Just like I talked about the owner that said we had an ear issue and it was actually a slip disc in the neck. Um, yes, the dog was holding its head down, shaking its head a little bit, um, yelping when the ear was touched, but that wasn't its issue. Okay, so that is all I have for you this evening. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll take a look. Sometimes the internet is a little funky and it's been really funky tonight. Like I said, I wanted to have the PowerPoint up to be able to show you, give you a little more visual. Um, and right now we are having, um, I don't want to really call it, it's, it's a promotion. So doTERRA is trying to help people out a little bit because they understand the situation. They're a debt-free company. They're, they're totally good. But they're having um, kits 20% off this month. So if that is something you're interested in, uh, let me know what your main concerns are, and I will piece together a, um, a kit for you. Okay, I have a beagle that gets really goopy eyes. There's something in the backyard of our new house that is making her eyes worse. They used to be just watery and she would have the water line under her eyes. Now she's getting a yellowish pale white goop that stays in the corner of her eyes. Do you have recommendations? Um, I would start off with the essential oils for the seasonal issues. So using that lemon, lavender, and peppermint is gonna be a big one. But with that, with that yellow pale white goop, I would be a little bit concerned that we have maybe something else going on. You might want to put try some lavender like around, dilute it out, um, but put it around on the orbit like far away. See if that helps. But I would go get the eye checked, make sure there's no scratches on the eye, or we don't have some sort of infection going on otherwise. Okay. Um, hopefully that answers your question. If not, feel free to message me as well. Okay, so um, like I mentioned, they have these kits 20% off. I can piece something together for you that's going to work well for your family, your budget. Just let me know, and I will get that going. And um, if you decide to get that through us, you get access to our VIP page, which has a ton more information in there. Lots of giveaways and prizes. We love to spoil people. So, All right, guys, I will be checking back on this video for more comments, questions, concerns, you name it. Um, but feel free to message me if you have any questions. And that's all I have. All right, bye.